welcome to another video this time we're gonna go through the complete environment creation process in unreal engine uh, this time it's gonna be a little bit different we're gonna guide someone uh, someone who is very good at making bfx but he's not really a specialist in environments so we're gonna give him a hand on how we can make his environment look better and we're gonna go through all the process from the block out to add more details until we have the finishing touches for our environment so in this lesson we're gonna learn about how to do the block out and the block out it's one of the most important areas of environment creation what is it is essentially the pieces that you lay in your environment that will be the main foundation for the, the scene and you can do it with blocks with whatever you want you don't necessarily need to import assets like this but it does really help uh, one thing that i will recommend you is to always use some kind of assets or model a little bit uh, pieces of your block out because if you only use cubes you're, it's not gonna work quite well i'm gonna explain the reason later but so far, Guillermo has done a pretty good job here on this piece. Like, obviously, the main thing is creating a rock. And how do we make it interesting? The answer is with composition. He says that it, it feels a little bit like claustrophobic. Like, it doesn't know quite well what is it wrong with it. Like, it's yeah, obviously there are some good things here. We're going to point out, but there's still something missing. And that is something that a lot of people have trouble with because they are not used to the language that artists use when they, it comes to composition. And composition is used every time when you make your environment, don't get me wrong, but in the blockout stage when you need to lay down the foundation of it and you're using like grayscale materials and, you know, just very basic forms to see where you're going to put your models. It's going to be extremely important. So right here we have a cave. It basically has some really nice elements. It has like the stairs, has some rocks here, has some bones, uh, which is really interesting. It's like another element. I really like it. And it adds a lot of silhouette. So we're going to keep this as the main thing. We have other shots here. And we're going to decide which one we're going to use for our main shot, our main composition. So what is composition? So basically composition, you need to take care of a few things. The light and shadow areas, which in this case, you can easily check which one is the lead part and the shadow part. So the lead part obviously should be like this one and the shadow area. It's pretty much the rest. So the silhouette is what you will see in the negative space. So what is a negative space? A negative space, it's a place where you can, for example, for example, you have a, you have a negative space here in this area where you can see the bone. And the reason for that is there is enough difference between the background and the foreground so that the bone is very, um, it stands out. You can read it. So negative space should be also something like this right because it's one solid piece and obviously the negative space of that will be this area here that we that you see and then you have another shape and then you have another shape right so all these shapes are creating silhouettes and silhouette is what will make your environment look cool it's what it gonna make it interesting a bad silhouette usually tends to be very boring uh, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit later and then the directional lines which is the lines that they are created by light and shadow but not necessarily it's always between light and shadow so what is a line a line in a in a 2d space uh it's basically what you write here, right? If I if I paint here and I and I put a line, you will see that the directional line is pretty much like this, and your eye will go from from here, gonna go up, and then you're gonna you're gonna see what's what's here, 
right? So lines are created everywhere in our scene. Line, lines are created here, lines are created here, lines are created here, here. And we're going to talk about that in a, in a few seconds. So first off, how do you decide where, where you're going to put your composition? Well, it's not, there is a rule that you can use call the foreground, middle ground, and the background. So the foreground, middle, background, it's pretty much like you must have in your compositions. Like otherwise, like you're going to have to play with other tools. So we can use this one to decide where you want to put your camera. I believe this is his main shot. And the reason I'm inclined to choose this one is because we do have a foreground, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, a foreground, a middle ground here, and a background here on the back, right? So that's really good. We already covered this, and that's why I think this image looks interesting compared to the other ones where you only have the middle ground and the background. You don't have the foreground here. In order to have the foreground here, you will need to put like a rock here, something like that and it's going to be really close to the camera, and then it's solved, right? Uh, but in this case, it doesn't, so we will assume, like, this is the main shot. Same for the rest of images. You don't have a foreground. You only have a middle ground and a background. So these ones are, are just not, not going to be as good as this one. So if you think, like, oh, I feel like this one looks good, I just don't know why, I just explain you why. We're going to try to put in words every feeling that you have when you see this image so that you can apply it next time when you make an environment. So the next thing I'm going to see, and that's something he mentioned, like he feels like you feel a little bit claustrophobic here. And it has a lot to do with directional lines. So if you take a look at these directional lines, I'm going to read it as something like this. Like you're going to have your stairs here. You have like this, are you going to go up and then you're going to go down. And here, like you have some blockers. These are called blocker because when your eye looks at like this direction here or here, like your eyes, when you encounter a vertical structure, it's they, they're going to feel like they are, you know, a little bit, uh, you need to bounce back. So, I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but it's working. So, it's good that you have those vertical structures here. So, here, it's pretty much flat. You don't see much, uh, you don't see much lines. There is, because lines are created by contrast, either by shadow or by color. So, you, I could see a line like this, right? So, in general, most important areas of this are happening here. Right, you can see what's going on here. You're pretty much having a buckle. Like, you watch this area, you go here, you go here, you go here, and then you repeat, and your eyes are constantly looking at this area. Not only because it has contrast between the light and shadow, but it's because the directional line here, it's, it's not really helping you to get out of the frame, right? So let's remove this so you can see it better. Like this line here that you see is, is actually keeping you in frame, which is good. So for the focal point, I believe the focal point will be somewhere around this area. How do you decide the focal point? It is the place where it has the most interesting silhouette and it's your main subject. For me, it's this area. This area is your focal point. So not everything needs to be detailed, but this area needs to be super clean. So there are a couple of ways to fix this. So if you take a look at other angles of this, uh, like you have a bigger negative space here compared to this one. This one is very small. Okay. Uh, you could rotate the camera a little bit so that you have a uh, a bigger space to work with here something like this for example okay another solution is just to place another object here and 
that will be something like this frog that you see here we can put it here something like that so by doing this if if we put a rock here and let's say like this is your rock it's have like so, such interesting shapes and everything and it's like blocking the viewer from going somewhere and your eyes are looking at this and you're following this line and you're going here you're going here and i i will say i like the silhouette but if you remove this we need a way for the player to actually go back here so if you actually remove this you 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 will have a bigger bigger negative space here and your eye will go to this area and if you have a rock like this with this shape you can actually move your eye here and do something like this right so obviously the the audience will look at wherever they want but wherever whenever they start we we need to make sure that they always end in the focal point so if they start here they're gonna go from from the right to the left if they start in the left in the left they're gonna go from the left to the right and this actually will help a lot the composition to feel more dynamic because what you see here i, I like what he did here where it's like a very dynamic line here you just need to close it so that it can be even more dynamic and you can do that very easily like like if you copy and paste this rock and you put it here on the left it's gonna it's just gonna look really really nice okay so that's on directional light lines we're gonna talk about light and shadow areas so obviously the environment feels a little bit dark to my taste and although this is a blockout it's a good you know it's a good idea to start playing with the lights because the lights are part of your composition the light and the shadow and so far if i check my this image here the light is most likely just in this area that's the area shape the the area that composes the light and the shadow it's pretty much all the rest of it which is too big right in proportion like the light is very small so we will need to play a little bit with the directional light so that we can have lights obviously uh, because this is a there is a hole here in the cave we we have the opportunity to put the sunlight here and we we can put some lights and it will actually create like a rim light here and some other areas but don't be afraid to put some artificial lights here like maybe you don't know that the, another light is coming from another source so you can have some areas here like like this area for example can be uh, a little bit lighter otherwise your scene is gonna look really dark and that's not good for composition but overall like you will need to use this opportunity to have these open area to play with the sunlight and the light shaft and everything which i see you're already doing there's a little bit of bloom here we just need to make sure that other areas are also lit because they are very dark and while you can do this later in in your scene it doesn't hurt to do it at the very beginning because if at the very beginning it looks good you are pretty much you pretty much won the battle on creating the environment and this already it's don't get me wrong this is a really good blockout uh, i'm sure most of you will see like hey but like what's wrong with this and we're pointing out these uh these concepts that we need to have no matter which which environment we're making if we apply with these concepts like we're gonna be on a good track so i will say Directional lines is the most important part here to have a very dynamic composition. Like you go from here and then you go from here and then you have another area here, maybe like a rock or something. So you can have a bigger area to work with. This area, I don't really, I don't really see anything wrong. I will say just, um, we will see later stages on the environment creation, how you put the spawns. But for now, it's, it's just fine. 
Uh, the stairs look really nice. It has a little bit of contrast with the cave and everything. So it's it's gonna be looking quite good. So these are the concepts for composition that you can apply in the blockout stage. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about the other areas like detailing and this kind of stuff. So we're gonna guide you through all the process from the blockout to a finished environment. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. And if you wanna see how this environment ends, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.